Well, good evening, everyone. We are Pastors Leroy and... Hey, Lawrence. Good evening, everybody. Once again, we are the proud pastors of Relentless Global Church here in Houston, Texas, and the spring area. Yes, Glory be are. to God. Praise God. And we are excited to be before you on tonight. There's a word from the Lord just for you, yes, and we are so excited to break the bread of life with you. We hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful yes. evening on today. And we declare God's greatest blessings upon you. Hey, Miss Shelley, we love you, daughter. And we so appreciate you all for allowing us the privilege yes. of coming to your homes. Because the truth is, you could be anywhere. You could follow anyone. But on tonight, you have chosen Relentless Global Church. And we are so super excited to be with you on tonight and to be before your presence. But for one quick announcement, we have a men's fellowship coming up in about two weeks. Yes, we do. What's the date again? October the 14th. October the 14th. Saturday. Brothers, men, on a Saturday morning between 10 and 12, uh, we're going to have a men's fellowship, and we're excited with our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Davenport. He's an awesome vessel, awesome man of God, yes. who will minister the Word of God. He's anointed through counseling, but he's also a pastor, and he will be here to help yes. heal the broken heart of our brothers. Whatever questions you may have, write them down, and those questions will be answered. So, brothers, invite someone, and encourage other brothers, ladies. Help us to encourage to bring your uncles and your, your dads and your husbands and, and all those brothers that you know that need to be healed and to be made whole. And we're looking forward for that to happen. Amen. Praise Pastor God. Betty. Good evening, everybody. We are so grateful to God that you have taken this moment to join us on tonight. There is a word for the Lord. So we ask at this time to press that share button. Press the share button. Share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones, and those people that you influence. And just let them know that we're on the air. Hey, Ms. Bree. And hey, we're going to be here for a few minutes. We're going to let you go so that you can have your dinner, enjoy your family. <laughs> but we appreciate this time of, uh, of you coming together to receive the word of God. God bless you. Amen. Bless the be. Beasley household, my brother doing better. Good to see you, Beasley. Uh, we're having probably gonna close our series on entitled It's Time for Change. Oh, wow, it's time for change. And on Sunday, as we said always, yes. uh, invite someone on, on our Sunday services, of course, help us to share the message on tonight because there are changes that we all need to, to make. There's yes. a continual change. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you're not about change, because most people are stuck in a rut, mm. most people like life mediocre. But at the same time, we need to understand that in life, there's a continual change, a progression. You should be getting better. You should be getting wiser. Yes. You should be like Jabez. You, your borders should be expanding. Yes. Or in the kingdom of God, you yes. should rise. You should be increasing. Yes. Uh, we're not staying stagnant. We're not boring and, and all those type of things as Christians now, as Christians, we need to show an example mm -hmm. of being excited about Christ, excited about our lives, but also knowing that we're going to be changing and progressing and growing. Yes. So now, we talked about a few things on, on last, uh, last Wednesday. Why should I change? What, what pastor do I need to change and why should I do it? Mm -hmm. And we closed with this one on last Sunday, Matthew 28 and 19. Matthew 28 and 19, Thank because you. brothers... You need to change. Mothers, wives, you need to change. Teens, children, you need to change. But change for the better. Getting stronger, getting wiser, and increasing in the knowledge and the wisdom of our Lord. Amen. So that we can change by the renewing of our minds. minds changing yes. our heart Hallelujah. so that we're not mad and angry and have hatred towards our brothers and sisters and ex-husbands, ex-boyfriends, and, 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 and so forth. So that I don't do anything to block my heart because faith works by love. So let's write that one down. Let's, let, let that be the first quote. Faith works by love. Faith so now I love. need to change yes. what's going on inside of my heart yes. so that the flow of the spirit can work through me and it can yes. advance my life and I can be a blessing in the lives of others. God. Matthew 28, 19 says, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So why should I change? Because of the calling. Yes. Because of the calling on my life. Not just to be a banker, not just to be a lawyer, not just to be a trash man uh, a picker up or not not just to be a teacher or and all these type of things, not just your occupation, wow. but we are all called to be witnesses we 're yeah. all called to be an example. The church needs to get back, Pastor Beta, to yes. caring about the world, yes. caring about the lost. Mm -hmm. So at least I should make a decision that I'm going to live the best life that I can live, change and renew my life for the better so I can be a witness, so I can be a light, and so that I can win those to Christ. The word there, go, 
means it's an action word. There's something I must do. Wow. To make the disciples mean, as a Christian, I should get involved in witnessing. And lastly, baptizing simply means leading someone to Christ. Wouldn't it be a shame? Mm. I live to be 120 years old. I die and I go to heaven and I finally see the Lord face to face. And then he looks at me with a, 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 a sense of disappointment because I brought no one with me. Come on. I witnessed to no one. Wow. I ministered to no one. Yeah. My whole life was about me, myself, and I. Wow. And wouldn't that be sad to stand before the presence of Jesus and not bring someone with me? We, we as the body of Christ. Need to come back to caring about the lost. lost. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Mm -hmm. Well, what should I use if I'm changing for the calling? The word of God. Yes, we should. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture Mm -hmm. is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine. That's the knowledge of God's word. Now watch this. For reproof. Correction. Why? Because I need to change. Yes, we need to change. When I get saved, the only thing that got saved about me is my spirit. Mm-hmm. My head didn't change. My eye didn't change. My hand didn't change. My feet didn't change. Yes. But watch this. There's something on the inside that did inside. change. Yes. But watch this. When I get God's word, it renews my mind yes. and it helps change my character. So the Bible says reproof and correction. All scripture is to help me change for the better. Yes. Change how, pastor? In training me, Mm. bringing discipline to my life, bringing teaching to my life to help bring correction in my life. So, number one, why do I need to change, Pastor? Because of the calling on my life. Number two, let's go to number two, Ephesians chapter two, verse 11. Why do I need to change, Pastor? Because of the gospel message. My goodness. Do you not realize that many people in the world will never read a Bible? But the only Bible they will read is the life that you and I live. So watch what Ephesians chapter 2 through the Apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus. Mm. Therefore, remember that you once, you were Gentiles in the flesh. You used to be crazy. You used to be an alcoholic. You used to be a cheater, a liar, and a scheme and all. You used to be all these things. You used to be called uncircumcision, meaning without a covenant. Yes. By what is called circumcision made by the flesh of hands, Mm. verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, unsaved, and in the world being aliens from the commonwealth, that's that's covenant, strangers from the covenants of promise Mm. in Christ, covenants come to me, covenants of promise, Mm. and uh, and there are over 8,810 promises in the Bible. Wow. Come on, write that number back. 8,000. Wow. 810 promises in the Bible. Mm. But because we were strangers from the covenant of promises, having no hope without Christ, a God in the world, but now, everybody write, but now. But now. But now, yes. in Christ, we've been in talking Christ. about that on Sundays, yes. in Christ is yes, the anointed yes, one. Come on. In Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off, <laughs> have changed, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Thank you. Because I heard a Thank man you. or a woman who preached the gospel. Yes, sir. I was convicted of my sins in my heart. Yes. I had a decision to make. I had to confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, Hallelujah. that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yes, and do. the Bible says I'm now saved. I have made a change from darkness into light, wow. from being lost to being found, yes. from being a sinner to being saved. But I made a change. change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made a change by the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The blood of Woo. Jesus Christ washed me Woo. of all of my sin, Come my on. shame, yes. my guilt, my iniquities. Now other folk may remember, but when it comes to my heavenly Father, he remembers my sins oh. no more. Come on. Yes, sir. Be- Absolutely. Why do I need to change? Because of the gospel. Yes. Watch what John 4 Thank and 13 Lord says. Jesus. Hey, Sister Crystal, good to see you. John chapter 4, verse 13. Yes. Jesus answered and said, now here the backdrop of the story is the woman at the well. Yeah. So the disciples walked away from Jesus to go get him some food. Jesus is leaning on a well. A, a, a woman without a covenant comes to Jesus, and, and, and they have a conversation about water. 
But the thing that I want to express to you is the type of water that Jesus was talking about was the water of the Holy Spirit. Watch what he says. He tells her she needs this water, which was him. She says the well is deep. Then you have no water to, to get the water out of the well. So Jesus answered and says to her, woman, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. Yes. But the water that I shall give Jesus, saying to this woman, will become, watch this, in him Come a on. change, yes. in him uh -huh. a fountain of water springing up unto everlasting life. Everlasting. So he's telling her that if you want this water that you'll never thirst again, then you're going to have to make a decision to accept Jesus, which is Jesus talking about himself, so that you can receive the water of the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and there will be something on the inside of you 24 hours a day for the rest of your life causing you to change. Yes, yes, absolutely. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. She experienced the gospel message through Jesus, she repented. Well, what did she repent from? Because she was a woman without a covenant. She was confused. She was a woman who was married four times. And the man she was with now was she was shacking with this man. So she repented of her sins. And then she became a witness. She became an instant evangelist. Because the water that Jesus was talking about came within her and it changed her. Yes. And when and she knew, Woo. listen to me, she knew that there was a change yes. on the inside. Yes, so much so yes. that this woman ran into the city, told all the city, <laughs> told all the men, yes. the mayor, the governor, there the president, go. corporations, men, men who had power Means. and significance. What yes. was this? She evangelized to them, said, come see a man yes, who did. told me about all my sins. Come see a man yes, who did. changed my life. Praise Come God. see a man who gave me some living water. Glory to God. And all these men came out of the city. They came to the well to experience the Jesus oh, that the man. woman at the well experienced. And they were all changed. Praise God. The whole city of Samaria received the gospel of the kingdom of God. Glory because God. one woman repented. Whew. One woman changed. What about you tonight? Amen. Everybody Glory say change, change, change. Change, change, change. <laughs> Glory to God. Number three, last one. Number three, why hmm. do I need to change Amen. to glorify God? Yes, we do. You need to change yes, not for a new house, not no, for a new car, not so your wife will cook, not so your husband would, <laughs> would go to work and, and, and bring some money. No, 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 no. Ah, we need to change yes. so that we can glorify God. Watch this. Mm -hmm. When I change... Mm -hmm. For the sole purpose of glorifying God, then I can please my wife. Absolutely. When I change, yes. for the sole purpose of glorifying God, then I can please my husband. Absolutely. When I change, yes. for the sole purpose of glorifying God, then he, an anointing will come upon me. Yes, it will. Then I can be promoted. Yes, then I can increase. Then I can prosper and I can excel. When my sole purpose of changing is to glorify God. Amen. Psalms 86 and 9 Thank says God. this. Thank Psalms 86 verse 9. Amen. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, yes. and shall glorify your name. Glorify. The word glorify in the Hebrew is doxazo, D-O-X-A-Z-O. Mm -hmm. It means to honor, to magnify, to celebrate. It means to hold in high honor, high esteem. Yes. But watch what Acts 11 and 18 says, because we've been created. To glorify God. Yes, but I can't glorify God if I'm, if I'm a liar. I can't glorify God if I mistreat my spouse. Amen. I can't glorify God ah. if I ne neglect my children. Yes. I can't glorify, glorify God if I'm not a tithe. If I'm not committed to helping advance the gospel in the kingdom. I can't glorify God if, if I'm not who I say I am. I'm a hypocrite. So watch this. All nations. All oh nations. my goodness. All of us have been called to glorify God. Amen. Acts 11 and 18. When they heard these things, they became silent Woo. and they glorified God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance unto life. Yeah. Jesus didn't come for the Jews only. He said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. But when the people of Jerusalem heard the gospel yeah. and when they were convicted and pierced in their heart by the Holy Ghost, then they were changed. Watch yeah. this from the inside 
out. Yes, sir. Yes, We're here sir. to glorify God. First Amen. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. First yes, Corinthians sir. chapter 10, verse 31. Amen. Therefore, whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. I made Hallelujah. a decision to change Hallelujah. that God may be glorified with my life. Absolutely. I made a decision to change so I can have a better quality marriage. Yes. I made a decision decision to change yes. so that I could increase financially. Yes. I made a decision to change to be a better witness, to yes. be a better father, yes. to be a better brother to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes. I have to make a change. And when I make a change with a good character, a good quality life, watch this. It all brings glory to, to God. God. Yes, it does. I am what I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> By it. the grace of God. Hallelujah. And I have been created. Yes. To glorify God. Amen. Well, let's look at this one. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Let's look at what the wisest man who ever lived on earth, Solomon, yes. David's son. Uh -huh. Let's look at what Solomon said. This was after the fall of Solomon. This was after all the wives and concubines. And the, God told him, don't marry those foreign women. What did he do? He married those foreign women. And his kingdom came down. Woo! After his kingdom fell, he <laughs> writes this scripture in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. And watch the wisdom of Solomon. Hmm. To everything, and I mean everything. Everything. <laughs> there is a season. <laughs> a, a time for every purpose. Hmm. And then when you read it on down, he'll tell you there's a time to be born. There's a time of to course, die. Yeah. There's a time to plant. There's a time to reap. Yeah. There's a time to kill. There's a time to heal. There's a time uh, of sorrow. There's a time of joy. There's a time to break down. And then there's a time to build up. What was the purpose of all of this? In all of your Christian life, there'll be a, an evolution of change. Yes, there'll always be a constant changing in your life. Okay. There will be a time to pray. Then there's a time to stop praying. There's a time to give. There's a time to stop giving. But there's a constant change. And you need to know your season. Yes. Listen to yes. me. Yes. Yes. You and I need to get into yes. the presence of God so we can know the times. Oh my God. To know the times and yes. the seasons that we're in. Yes. And when we know the times and we know the season, watch this, we can handle the change. Ooh. See, there's winter, spring, summer, and fall. But see, in, in the wintertime, you need a coat. But you don't need a coat in the summertime. You need to know the season. Yes. You need to know the time of Come change. On. Absolutely. <laughs> Glory to be to God. Glory you God. need to know what, what is what is what is Solomon telling us? Mm. There's a time to commit your life to God. And that time for you is now. Because Solomon realized he needed to repent. Get back into the will of God for his life and get back into the right season of his life. Wow. There is a change and it shall be revealed. Watch how the prophet Isaiah says it. Wow. There's a future change coming through Isaiah talking about Jesus Christ, yes. talking about the Holy Ghost. Yes. But watch how he prophetically talks about the future change. Wow. Isaiah 43 and 19. Come on. Isaiah 43 and 19. Come on. Everybody write back to Pastor say, it's time for a change. It's time for a change. Behold, remember, future. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will do a new thing. Yes. Everybody say, it's time for a change. It's time for a change. God yes. is speaking through the prophet Woo. about a change. Come on. Now, it shall spring forth. Yes. Shall you not know it? I will even make the road in the wilderness and the rivers in a desert. He will, in the wilderness, it takes work to bring back the brush and all the trees to make a path. But then the rivers in the desert is the Holy, it's like the Samaritan woman with Jesus at the well in John 4. The, uh, the Holy Spirit, there are rivers of living water. He's talking about the future Holy Spirit. He's talking about the future Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And there's going to be a road open up. In other words, there's going to be a change. Yes. There are going to be things in your heart, a wilderness. Yes. There's going to be things in your heart, challenges. There's going to be things in your heart, a desert. But the Lord will bring a word through the future Messiah that will open up the roads and make your way clear. Wow. 
There, there will be rivers of living water. There will be no more drought. No more drought. In other words, if you're, if you're without a job, that there are rivers will flow into your life and open up a job. It's time for a change. It's time for employment. It's time for a happy marriage. It's time to grow up and mature in the things of God. It's time to walk in the spirit of discernment. In other words, the rivers of living water will start flowing. Amen. Life for you will become living easier. Water. Living waters. Amen. Let's look at this one. Let's look at an example of, of, of it in 2 Peter 2 and 4. Come on. Change from your worldly view to a kingdom view. Mm. Because you got to change how you see things in your life. Yes. 2 Peter 2 and 4. For if God did not spare the angels, that's Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, where the angels in heaven, Satan and, and two-thirds of the angels fell. This is what he's referring to. If God didn't spare them who sinned, but were cast down to hell and delivered unto chains of darkness, reserved unto judgment because they sinned against God, they had fallen, they never repented. And God did not spare the ancient world, which was Noah, the people were living in sin. God told a righteous man to build an ark and save the eight folk in his family, which was Noah. For one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. God didn't change his mind with them because they would not repent. They would not change. Satan fell because he wouldn't repent. Noah's people died because they wouldn't repent or they would not change. Watch this verse 6. Woo, and whoa. turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes My and God. condemned them to destruction, making Sodom and Gomorrah an example, a, a, of an example yes. to those who afterwards would live ungodly. Right. So God bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexual and lesbian lifestyle, yes. because that's against God. Yes. If God didn't change his mind about them, then you're going to have to make the change to commit to God. Yes, we Watch do. what he says. Yes. For that righteous man, okay, excuse me, verse 7, and delivered the righteous lot. Remember, mm -hmm. the world was in sin. Noah was saved. Yes. In Lot's day, Sodom and Gomorrah were in sin, but Lot was saved. Yes. Watch this. Who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, the homosexual lifestyle. Yes. For, for that righteous man, Lot, dwelling among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. But God never changed his mind about the never. fall of the, of the devil. Never. God never changed his mind yes. about the fall of through the flood. Yes. God never changed his mind about the fall of Sodom and Gomorrah. What is Peter teaching us? He's teaching us that God is righteous and that if we don't change, then judgment will reign. Mm. Let me say it again. Mm. God is teaching us through 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9, Amen. that we as the people of God must change for the better. Yeah. Wow. We must change and stop being unwise. Yes. We must change and stop being ignorant and unlearned. We must change to get God's word yes. so I'll know how to live, how to conduct myself, yes. how to believe so I can increase and prosper in all of my life. Yes. But the thing that's being taught tonight is this, my brother, yes. you must change. Amen. Sister, you and I must change. Let's, let's close with this. Amen. What is the greatest change of all? <laughs> Come on. The greatest change of all. Yes, Romans yes. chapter 12. Yes. Verse 1. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present change. Uh -huh. You present change. Uh -huh. You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. And do not be conformed to this world. Yes. So be what? Transformed yes. change uh -huh. by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The most important change is for you and I to get saved. Amen. So we close with 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 to prove it out. Yes. The most important change of all mm. is to renew your mind yes. and get God's word through Jesus Christ and give your life to Jesus. Jesus told nickname is you must be born again. Yes, sure. If you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom. Wow. Then you'll never see the power, yes. which means you'll never change. <laughs> Wow. You must be born again born so that you can see and perceive the kingdom. Yes. What comes with the kingdom? Power. Yes. 
And power causes you to change. Yes, it will. Yes, 2 it will. Corinthians 5 and 17, and we'll close with this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Yes. Therefore, uh -huh. if anyone is in Christ, the Ooh, anointed one. Glory to God. He has changed. Yes. <laughs> He's a new creation, a new creature. Pastor, how do you know those yes. that are in Christ change? Yes. Old things have passed away. Absolutely. And behold, all things have become new. Yes. What change has occurred with this scripture? You're born again. Yes. There's a newness of life on the inside. You are now free from all sin. Everybody write back and say, free from all sin. Free from all sin. Now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Christ righteousness, Jesus. peace, and joy through the Holy Spirit. But this is my favorite one. Now I can hear from God. Glory be to God. Oh, you ever you. wonder why you pray and you don't get the right answers? You're, you're still stuck in this. You're still stuck in that. You got to be able to hear from God. But to, to do that, you got to change. Yes. Let, let me give you an example. Yes. Change in your prayer time. Increase your prayer time. Yes. Let me show you how you change. Mm. Instead of praying five minutes a day, running in and out the house, how about go to bed early? <laughs> well, How about wake up a little earlier <laughs> and then spend yes. 30 minutes time with God, 45 minutes, so I can get quiet and be still and in his presence. Yeah. See, see what, what did I just do? I change so I can become closer to God. Amen. How about changing when it comes to reading the word of God? Spend more time reading the word of God. Make that change. Yeah. How about studying the word of God? Study to show yourself approved. How about making more time to study the word of God and make that change? Yeah. How about asking your wife for forgiveness? Asking your husband Amen. for forgiveness and your children for forgiveness so that I can make a change and become a better husband, a better wife, a better parent, a better student. <laughs> the issue is this. Yes. If you're in Christ, hmm. there's going to be a continual a renewal, a renewal, yes. a continual process of change yes. so that I can become better Every single day, I must, I must look at my life and judge my life yes. and say to myself, Pastor Leroy, Pastor Betty, yes. what do I need to do to make my life better? Yes. What do I need to change to bring income? What do I need to change to be a better husband, a better wife? What is it that I need? I, I'm not pointing at my wife, not pointing at your husband, yes. but looking at yourself, judging yourself, yes. and you'll, you won't be judged, the Bible says. Yes. What do you need to change? That's what I need to say to myself privately. Amen. What do I need to change yes. to support my wife? Absolutely. What do I need to change to support my husband? Yes, what absolutely. do I need to change to, to support the vision of the house of God? Amen. What do I need to change as a Christian to be a better witness? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you Thank are you. honest with yourself, my brother and my sisters, then you are honest and you can judge yourself and then you can clearly say, I need to change this. Yes. Pray to the Lord. Reveal to me, Lord, yes, myself. Yes. And what do I need to do to, be, to worship you and honor you more, Lord? Yes. See, those are the questions that need to be asked so you can make the change. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, let's clap the heart, our hands and give God the glory and the honor glory for the word of God. Remember, oh, yeah. hit the share button. Yes. Help us to share the gospel. I promise you, there's someone in your life, there's someone that's connected to you on Facebook and all the rest of it yes. that needs to hear this word. Call your mom, your dad, your sister, your brothers. Call your, your distant cousin. Let them know there's a word from heaven Amen. and help them to direct them to this message, to this page, and let them hear the word of the living God. Thank Amen. Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. We love you guys so much. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Uh, go to our website for those of you who are, are friends of ours and new visitors www.relentlessglobalchurch.org is our email. You can see us, check us out, see what we're about. You can also sow your tithes, offerings, gift of love, make a difference, help us to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to email us, our email address is info at relentlessglobalchurch.org. And of course, if you'd like to call us, 713-936-6848. Lastly, our mailing address is RGC Relentless Global Church, PO Box 2202. Houston, Texas, 77252. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Hit the share button. And remember, Relentless Global, Global Church is where? Love reigns. Love reigns. 
Come on Sunday. Yes. Invite someone. And that we're going to probably teach our last message on the Aww. anointing. But every service, <laughs> the power of God has, has fallen in the house. Oh my People were ministered to. Miracle signs and wonders were manifested. And remember, brothers, the next two weeks, next couple Saturdays is coming October up. October the 14th. October the 14th. We're yes. having our men's fellowship. Brothers, yeah. come so we can teach you and train you how to be better kings. Amen. Amen. Anything else, Pastor Betty? Breakfast is available on that day as well. We're gonna, but we're gonna feed you too. Amen. <laughs> so it's free, <laughs> it's free, free of charge. Call the church office at seven one three nine three six six eight four eight so we can get your res a reservation. Amen, uh, brothers. Amen. We're looking forward to having a wonderful time. So Celeste, good to see you, Jerry, Brother Kerry, Teresa. God bless you all, Miss Ida. We love you all. God bless you. God bless you. We declare and decree, Miss Linda Maples. Bless the Maple House. We, we we declare and decree the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. You too, Miss Angela, your, your husband. God bless y'all. We declare and decree the blessing of the Lord rest upon you, your home. The rest of your week will be awesome. We declare that the angels of the Lord will go before you and prosper your way. Sweet sleep is your portion on tonight. And we declare and decree shalom to shalom. your home and to your family. In Jesus' name. Love Good night, all. Guys. Love you, Dre. Y'all have a wonderful evening, wonderful week. Bree, we love you. Love Bree's my you, favorite Abby. member. Go ahead on, Bree. Elijah. D and AJ, AJ. we bless the, the Jones household. Avery. See you all. Tanya Haskett, love you. Aiden. Love you so much, Miss Tanya. Love you guys. And remember, shalom means nothing missing and nothing broken. Kai. God bless you. Good night, all. Good night, love Crystal. You.